Hi there, dear listener. Lazlo here with a quick pre-roll message for you. Before we get started, I want to let you know there are all kinds of convenient ways for you to support my efforts to bring you all these podcast shows on Chinese history, Chinese sayings, and tea history. If you go to my website at teacup.media and click the support button at the top, you'll find a bunch of ways to show some appreciation. There's Patreon, where you can get early access to new episodes, exclusive content, and an invite to the Teacup Media Discord channel, and more. CHP Premium, it also has early access, exclusive episodes, and ad-free versions of the entire CHP back catalog. Plus, there's several other ways to donate to the show as well. Check the episode show notes for a link to that very page. And my deepest thanks for listening and supporting me and my humble efforts. Hello again, everybody. Laszlo Montgomery with another Cheng Yu, Chinese idiom, or saying, a quickie today. Not a long or involved story, but a useful and relatable one all the same. Today, we look at the woman with the unforgettable voice, Han E, who coincidentally was also from the state of Han. This ancient state is part of what's today Shanxi and Henan. And guess which period of Chinese history our saying for today originated? Well, if you guessed the spring and autumn period, you guessed right. Eastern Zhou Dynasty again. The Han state was completely surrounded by enemies. During the Warring States period, they were the first kingdom to go. But our story takes place when they were still around. This time around at the Chinese Sayings Podcast, we're going to learn about Yu Yin Rao Liang. And like all the Chinese sayings we'll look at in this second season, this one has something to do with music. So let's break it down as we always do. Yu Yin Rao Liang. The first character, Yu, means remaining or surplus, among other things. Yin is sound. Rao means to revolve or to coil around. And Liang, well, besides being a very common surname, means the beam of a roof, and rao liang means of a sound to reverberate. So at face value, these four characters say, remaining sound coils around the roof beam, or reverberates. What can that possibly mean? Let's find out. Today's story comes out of a work we have not referenced yet, the Liezi, this classic from ancient China, along with the Tao Te Ching and the Zhuangzi, are the three books that make up the Taoism trilogy, the three core books of Taoism. And this Chang Yu comes from chapter 5 of the Liezi. It's called the Tang Wen, the questions of Tang. That's first tone Tang. It means soup. But it's also a surname. And in this example is the surname of the Shang Dynasty founder, King Tang, the Shang being the oldest dynasty in Chinese history for which we have written records. CHP episodes 15 and 114, if you want to hear more, just saying. So from this chapter of the Lietze, we have the story of Han E, who traveled from her home in the kingdom of Han to the neighboring kingdom of Qi. Qi is in Shandong province. It's been mentioned before. By the time Han E arrived at the west gate of the city called the Yongmen, she was starving, broke, and had run out of food. As I said, Han E had a beautiful singing voice. She could move people to tears sometimes. Hungry and all, she set herself up outside the city gate in the Qi capital, Linzi, and began singing for her supper in that amazing voice she had. She had attracted quite a crowd, and their jaws just dropped as they beheld the sound of her voice, not to mention her beauty. Their hearts were moved with her songs and by the sheer artistry of what they were hearing. And when she left her spot beside the young man to go look for an inn to rest, people still stood by the city gate listening, even though there was nobody there anymore. And for three days, it was said, when people stopped outside that spot at young man where she sang, it said the sound of Han E's unforgettable melodious voice still lingered as if she was still standing there. Meanwhile, Han E didn't have enough cash to get a room at any inn. And on top of that, the innkeeper really laid into her and 
scolded her for her poverty and just gave her a whole attitude because of her empty purse. And he told Han uh, to beat it. She burst into tears at the hopelessness of her situation and for the cold-heartedness of the innkeeper. Those who were close by heard the sound of her weeping and were so overwhelmed with grief and sadness themselves that they, too, were hit with this ungovernable fit of sobbing. And some people were so moved by Han e that they couldn't sleep or eat for three days. And so they took pity on her and fed her, gave her strings of cash, and begged her to return to the young men to sing her songs and make everybody happy and cheerful. And that's what she did. And she sang for the people of Qi and the residents there, who, over time, also acquired a reputation for their excellent singing, would say of Han E, Yu Yin, Rao Liang, that the sound of Han E's singing lingered and reverberated among the rafters. And, well, there's a rejoinder to this, you know, sort of like in that in that past episode from last season, episode three, of a swan feather from a thousand miles away, Qian Li Song E Mao, that Cheng Yu would be followed with the words Li Qing, Qing Yi Zhong. It's a mere trifle, but it's heavy with meaning and affection. Well, in the case of Han E, not only did the sounds linger among the rafters, but San Ri Bu Jue, it didn't stop for three days. San Ri, three days, Bu Jue, was prolonged. So that's the complete deluxe version of this Cheng Yu. Four characters plus four. But, just like Qian Li Song E Mao, all you have to say is Yu Yin Rao Liang, and you're in like Flynn. The rejoinder, no es necesario. If you want the best of both worlds, there's also a conjunction of the two that goes Rao Liang, it reverberated among the rafters, San Ri for three days. But if you just say Yu Yin Rao Liang, you're golden. No one's going to look at you funny or call you a jerk. Nowadays, this Cheng Yu is used to describe what you might say after hearing an incredible speech or after attending a TED Talk or anything like that. And if the words spoken affected you, you know, like words can do sometimes, then you could tell your friend, Yu Yin Rao Liang. Wow, the words are still reverberating in my head. So you can use it that way, too. Anything, a speech, a tune, a podcast, whatever. If you can't get that out of your head, you have every right to say Yu Yin Zhao Liang or any of the other variations of that Cheng Yu. And as the rejoinder, San Zhi Bu Jie, completely optional. So that, Watashi no Yu Jin, is going to be that for this time. Nothing long and drawn out, a quick simple and easy Chinese saying with a simple and easy story attached to it. I use this one every now and then. Now you can too. Yu Yin Zhao Liang. And if you haven't figured out yet, all the Chinese names and words, as well as the tone marks on the pinyin, are all available for you at the website to assist you if you need it. That's at teacup.media. I'm sure I don't have to tell you about the China History Podcast and China Vintage Hour, two other podcast programs for such intelligent and good-looking listeners like yourselves, all available for free, as I said, at teacup.media. And also, don't forget, if you're traveling on Cathay Pacific Airways and you get the itch to learn some Chinese history or a few Chinese sayings and you forgot your Sony Walkman, all you got to do is hook yourself up to Cathay's award-winning in-flight entertainment system and listen away. Hours upon hours of China history podcasts and Chinese sayings to help you survive that long flight. And think how much smarter you'll be when you get to your destination. Okay, enough grandstanding for all these audio-on-demand programs at Teacup Media. On behalf of Joe Wei, leading the team at the Cheng Yu Research Center, this here's Laszlo Montgomery signing off once again from the City of Angels, Jiazhou Luoshanji. Please consider coming back next time, would you, for another useful, satisfying, and nutritious Cheng Yu here at the Chinese Sayings Podcast.